Hi, everyone. Welcome again uh, to one of our talks, TPM Talks. Uh, we talk, as you know, by now we talk regularly about different legal uh, issues and uh, law-related issues as well uh, with respect to um, legal community in Canada and, and just for the information of our various communities in Canada as well. So my name is Johnson Babalola, and I'm the group managing partner of Top Market Attorneys. Top Market Attorneys, um, short into TPM, uh, is a Toronto-based law firm. And our areas of practice include litigation, uh, different areas of litigation, immigration, refugee law, real estate, workplace investigations. And um, basically, we, 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 we come to you from time to time just to provide you some information today. We are talking about a very important topic, um, or issue rather, um, which is uh, who can make a refugee claim in Canada? And I have with me here today to talk about that, Mr. Tosin Palai. Uh, Tosin, uh, welcome. And Tosin is one of our associates and uh, he specializes uh, in, uh, or he focuses his practice rather on litigation, um, every area of litigation, uh, excluding criminal litigation. That's correct, Tosi. Excluding <laughs> criminal litigation, but you do you do commercial litigation, you do real estate litigation, immigration litigation, civil litigation, and uh, tax litigation as well, and ADR as well. And uh, so those are the areas that uh, Tosin's practice uh, is focused on. And um, so so welcome and say hi to our viewers, Tosi. Thank you very much. Uh, so where, where there's a dispute, yes, you, you just may find us in there. Hello, everyone. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'm happy to share this platform with the uh, legendary Johnson Babalola, um, JB, as we fondly call him, uh, as a guru in immigration and refugee law. Uh, also a guru in workplace investigations as well. So I hear. I, you know, you're, you're legendary. Oh my God, you're making me feel old. I'm still a young man. Come on, why are you doing that? I mean, me? young people are legends as well. Um, uh, <laughs> Jeff Bezos, um, Mark Zuckerberg, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I, young people are legends. So I'm a young man. So, Dustin, I like your outfit. Uh, looks great on you. And, um, you know, uh, tell me about that outfit or tell our viewers about it. Okay, well, I, uh, the outfit that I have uh, on is representative of the Yoruba people from southwestern Nigeria. Um, you have the fila and the buba, which people from the west will call the hat and the shirt. Um, if I do take off the hat, um, I probably will fit in very much into a western type attire, but uh, the fila sort of makes it um, representative of the Yoruba people from southwestern Nigeria. So, yeah. Excellent. It looks great on you. Uh, next time, send me the memo. I also have uh, a couple of those. Uh, so, you know, I can also come here and look, you know, you know what I mean? Look, look you know, good. I, well, I, I'm happy that I, I didn't send you this memo because, I mean, the, the information out there on the streets is that, you know, JB is in a class of his own when it comes to dressing up. So I had to pull one on you just, um, to, just to measure up for today, you know. So don't listen to rumors, my friend. Don't listen to rumors, but that's okay. Um, thank you for the compliments. You know, you know, how has it been? I haven't seen you physically in a while. What's been going on with you? Right. Uh, I've mostly been working remotely, just like the government of Ontario expects us to because of COVID protocols and all of that. Uh, but still working from home, uh, well, remotely, as we, we call it, um, still very professionally engaging. Um, over the last couple of days, I've had to deal with um, a number of uh, litigations involving uh, deportations from Canada and um, a lot of hard work went into that. But I'm glad to say that it turned out well and which is a delight in doing what we do to be able to help um, clients when they're in dire situations. And so um, COVID hasn't held us back from giving services to our people. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, that uh, the deportation matters ended well in favor of, of, of your clients. And uh, now let's talk about, uh, I, I just look forward to the end of the pandemic period so that we can all get together again. And uh, as we used to do, see each other physically i know we're getting the work done you know remotely and uh but you know what nothing beats us getting together once in a while seeing each other um but let, let, let's let's go back to the to the topic of today do you do you do you think that uh people really know um uh what it means to make a refugee claim 
based on your that's, experience. That, that's that's a very interesting question. Uh, but just just before I jump right into that, I just want to say here that the information that we're giving isn't intended to be legal advice. Uh, we're just providing information, like we said, off the bat to our community to ensure that uh, there's information out there. As is commonly said, knowledge is power, and uh, this is one way that we think we can relate with our community to to empower people with information that is necessary. So if you do have situations that you're dealing with personally, it's important that you try to get legal counsel from uh, a licensed representative who can provide you with tailored guidance to help in your situation. Uh, so that said, uh, back to the question about uh, whether or not people know, I, I, I do not think that that's the case because um, speaking from my own personal experience, I, I didn't know ab about refugee claims in Canada until I had some experience with certain other people that I met on the train while I was doing my master's here in Canada and was a whole interesting conversation and still even having that conversation with those folks didn't give me a full sense on, of what refugee claim or making a refugee claim in Canada was all about until much later uh, in my career. So I, I do think that uh, not much information is out there for people to know that when they are faced with certain things, um, there may be an alternative for them in terms of making a refugee claim. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you. I, you know, I, my years of uh, practice as, a, as an immigration or refugee lawyer. I have seen people walk into my office uh, who have been going through some terrible, terrible situations, persecutions in their countries. And they, they, they had no idea that they could seek for protection in Canada. I, 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 you know, we are all at different levels in life. You know, um, it's just that some kind of assume that uh, they cannot. But, but, but let me ask you, what are some of those uh, assumptions I do have a, a refugee claim, either rightly or wrong. Hmm. Well, again, back to my own personal experience, uh, before, before I got to know about refugee claim on a professional level, once I heard the word, ref I, I heard the word refugee before, but whenever I heard that word, I always thought about people um, in war-thorn areas um, who were fleeing from some kind of war or the other, or fleeing, fleeing from star starvation. I, I remember that my mother used to... Um, do some work with UNICEF and there were a lot of um, books, magazines in the home about UNICEF and children who looked emaciated from hunger, starvation and things like that. So for me readily, that was the picture about what a refugee should be and is. Uh, but experience has stopped me so far that there's so much more to that. Um, you could be dealing with a situation that you consider to be minor domestically, um, your inability to live and be treated like an equal member of society like other uh, members of society, all of those things could serve as a basis for you to, to make a refugee claim. So um, I think that different from the myths that are out there about refugee claim, there's so much more to uh, who a refugee claimant is and can be. Oh, I agree with you. I, and I, even beyond that, I, I, I think, um, you know, <laughs> when some people hear the word refugee also, they, 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 they have a, a negative, uh, uh, you know, perception about that individual. Yeah, yeah. It's a big misconception that refugees are, uh, you know, bad people and uh, they should not be here, that kind of thing. And uh, so, uh, listen, uh, over the years, you and I know that uh, refugees are decent people. It, they, it's just that circumstances of life, things have made them to leave their countries uh, where they were living and then try to, you know, locate to Canada and some other countries to seek for protection. And, uh, and, and you know, the finest of professionals uh, have come here uh, to make refugee claims uh, or seek for protection, doctors, lawyers, accountants, and, uh, uh, you know, regular people, uh, housewives, uh, you know, husbands and, and, and decent people, politicians and all those things who had left their country just to come here and seek for protection because they, there was just no way they could stay in their country. So when people have that negative uh, uh, perception about them or some, have some kind of misconception about them, it, it, is, it is unfortunate. And, and I think we need to keep educating ourselves, um, you know, that uh, refugees or refugee claimants I just like you and I, uh, you know, descent, descent people. And many of them have gone up to, to, to make positive contributions to, to, to this country, um, various positions. And, and, and that's, that's really good. And, and now let me ask you, uh, who, can, who can really make a refugee claim in Canada? Well, a person 
who or people who can make a refugee claim uh, have to do so for the reason why they are making that refugee claim. It could be by reason of persecution they're facing because of their race, um, you know, their religion. Uh, is your religion not accepted in the country where you live or the community where you live? And it's impossible for you to continue to live in that sort of situation in a safe manner then you can make a refugee claim. Uh, you could also make a refugee claim because of your political opinion. Um, you try to participate in developing your community or your nation, but that hasn't gone well and has put your life in danger. Then you could seek a refugee, make, to make a refugee claim. You could also make a refugee claim because of your nationality um, or being a part of a social group. Uh, you know, just people could be facing persecution just simply for the agenda. Um, you know, people could be facing persecution just simply because of their innate characteristics, you know, um, sexual orientation, uh, all those things form uh, as your membership of a social group and could be a basis for you uh, to make a refugee claim um, as a convention refugee. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I mean uh, when you talk about uh, being part of a social group, um, one of those that also comes to mind would be uh, people who are living with some kind of disability as well, you know, uh, I, in, in some countries, uh, it is it is a serious matter, and uh, they face a lot of persecution and abuses and uh, discriminations and stuff like that. And so, you know, the group goes on and on. And uh, but you know, separate from that, from seeking for uh, making a refugee claim, it's also a group of people that can seek for protection. Who are those people who can seek for protection, Tosin? Well, I mean, according to Canadian law, and again, our our focus is folks making. Uh, a claim for protection or a refugee claim from within Canada. So according to Nigerian law, I'm sorry, <laughs> Canadian law, um, a person can be in need of protection because they are facing the danger of torture. Uh, you can be facing a risk to your life um, if there are certain laws in your country that would seek to deprive you of your basic human rights. Uh, that, that, that puts a danger uh, to your life. Uh, you could also be seeking for protection because you face a risk of cruel and unusual treatment. So if the treatment you're going to get is unusual or seen internationally to be inhumane, um, you're facing punishment that is not, um, that doesn't match up to best known international standards. Those things could serve as a basis for you to be a person in need of protection in Canada. Uh, and, and, you know, one of the things I've always admired about, about you, Tosin, and uh, many of our uh, lawyers, uh, actually foreign trained lawyers, is the fact that uh, they, they they have a foundation, you know. Nigeria basically, uh, I, I saw that you, you made a reference to, to to Nigeria briefly there, and, and, and basically, you know, you you are also core to the Nigerian bar, as well as the uh, you know, uh, the Los Angeles of Ontario as well, the Bayern Ontario. So you are you're qualified in both countries, are right? Yeah, that's that's correct. It, absolutely. So 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 you know, the foundation is there, then another country built on it. So so you are. You are, you are super, super, super well connected with uh, with the world, uh, so to say. And and who are who are those people? Uh, who are those people that, in your opinion, are, are not eligible uh, to even make a refugee claim? Because you know, based on what you just said or what we just said, are we saying that everyone that comes to Canada can just make a refugee claim? Well, I mean. On the face of it, if you fit into any of these categories, you would expect that your claim uh, will be eligible, but there will be certain situations whereby, uh, although you may be facing persecution because of the things we talked about, your claim may not be eligible to go through the refugee process in Canada. Some of those reasons will be you're not admissible to Canada, and admissible in simple terms means that Canada doesn't Canada law or Canadian law doesn't allow you come into the country to remain in the country. Um, put put it that in simple layman terms. Um, so if Canadian law says you're not the kind of person we want in the society because uh, of security grounds, we consider you to be a danger to the public, or you've been involved in serious criminality. Um, serious criminality would deal with offenses, criminal offenses that is punishable for ten years and above. Even Ordinary criminality, so to say, you, you've had, you've committed a crime somewhere else, Canadian law will consider you not to be admissible to Canada. You, you as somebody who has a track record of violating human rights, um, uh, uh, 
in your country or from where you came to Canada from, you may not be admissible to Canada. And therefore, if there's an admissibility issue uh, that you're dealing with, you, your claim may not be eligible uh, to go through the refugee process. Um, your claim may also not be eligible because you've made a refugee claim in the past and that claim has been found not to be eligible to be granted status as a refugee claimant. Um, you could also not be uh, eligible for the refugee process if you made a previous claim in Canada that was rejected by the Immigration and Refugee Board. Um, another reason why a person may not be eligible to go through the refugee process is you made a claim in the past, although you didn't get a decision from the Refugee Board, uh, you withdrew your claim voluntarily or you abandoned it. And by abandonment, it means that you fail to show up to prove and establish um, the reasons for which you advance your refugee claim in the first place. So um, that in a general sense would be the reasons why a person um, may not be eligible, regardless of facing some of these problems that we talked about to go through the refugee process in Canada. Excellent, excellent. I, I, and I also, just to add to what you've said, uh, basically, you know, some people have also been found to be refugees in another country and uh, they may not be eligible or those who had crossed from the U.S. There's an agreement between the U.S. and Canada. It's, it's called the uh, Safe Third Country Agreement, STCA, uh, whereby basically what that means is that, you know, whichever of the two countries that, uh, you know, uh, a prospective refugee uh, claimant steps his or uh, legs upon, make that claim there. Uh, and, but that only applies to land borders when you are when you're crossing between, between the countries uh, through, through the land. And uh, so there are exceptions to that, and um, uh, we'll talk about the exception in a minute. But but you know those people may be found not to be eligible. And uh, if you have been granted uh, the status of a, of a protected person uh, in Canada or in another country, you cannot make a claim. And, uh, and and these are some of the grounds that people may not be found to be to be eligible. Again, it's it's not exhaustive, and uh, like we said, uh, people should seek for uh, legal counsel if need be. But you know. What are those, uh, you know, exceptions to the STCA? Uh, so, in terms of exceptions to the Safe Third Country Agreement, um, if you do have a family member in Canada at the point in time where you're crossing through that land border, uh, you may be exempted from um, being ineligible to make a refugee claim. And uh, the question then dovetails on who exactly is a family member. It's important that you are aware of that uh, so that you do not assume that because you have a cousin in Canada or some uncle somewhere in Canada, you then make that person a family member. There's a definition to who exactly a family member is and it essentially deals with your immediate family, so to say. Um, if you're also an unaccompanied minor coming into Canada uh, through, through having come through the US in this case, um, you will be exempted from that STCA bar. Um, there's also, and just, just to sort of break who an, an, an unaccompanied minor is, um, if you're under 18 and you're traveling without any adult or a person who is in local parentis or your parent or responsible for looking over you, um, then you'll be regarded as an unaccompanied minor and be able to benefit from that exemption. Um, if you also, um, there are public interest um, situations that apply to you. You may also be considered ex exempted from the STCA bar uh, from being eligible to make a refugee claim in Canada. Thank you so much. Just to be clear, uh, when we talk about uh, family members uh, in, in, in Canada, we are um, generally talking about aunts, uncles, spouses, siblings, uh, children, um, but when you're talking about your cousins, like Tosi said, uh, you know, um, no, that would not be covered. So, so be careful about that. And, um, and, 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 and that takes us to another question, which is uh, now you are eligible, everything, everything is okay. Uh, you know, where do you make your refugee claim? Oh, so to make a refugee claim in Canada, you, I expected to make it at your first opportunity. And in many cases, your first opportunity will be at the port of entry when you come in contact with a border uh, officer or an immigration officer. Uh, so port of entries will serve as the first point where you can make your refugee claim. Um, if you do not make a claim at the port of entry, you could also make a claim at designated points, um, Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada offices within the country or at a Canada Border Services Agency office uh, designated for that purpose, uh, you can make your refugee claim. But also bearing in mind that uh, this is 
but we're dealing with interesting times. We're in a post, I won't say post pandemic yet, we're still in the pandemic era. Um, systems have been put in place to prevent physical contact, a need for you to go into a designated office and things like that. So if you want to make an inland claim from within Canada, after you've come in through the port of entry, you could um, make these claims by sending your documents electronically uh, through portals that have already been created for this purpose. So I will say uh, you can always find that information yourself or seek legal counsel uh, to help you navigate that process. Absolutely. I, I was going to speak to the fact that it is very important for, for individuals to check uh, some of this information about making refugee claim in Canada uh, online, uh, the Migration Refugee Board website, the IRCC website, uh, talk to lawyers, talk to migration consultants, and very important for you to be to be well informed uh, before you take uh, those steps. And and Tosin, once again, I want to thank you for sharing this platform with me. Excellent, excellent with me. Uh, you've been able to uh, provide some information very useful to our viewers, and I hope they have gained one or two things here. Is there any uh, you know parting words uh, from you? Uh, well, just just before parting words, I, there's a question that comes to mind uh, while, while we're uh, uh, discussing this, and I, I'm just going to throw that to you. Um, would it be possible for a person who previously had status in Canada as a permanent resident to make a refugee claim? Oh yeah, if, if if you have lost, the key question is, have you lost the, the status? So if if you have lost that status, and uh, and there are reasons for you to seek for protection, uh, and you've never never made a uh, refugee claim, in my opinion, uh, absolutely, because when you when you look at the list of those who are not eligible, um, it doesn't say that those who have lost their, their permanent residency status in the past cannot. Uh, the most important thing is that, you know, I, I, are you eligible? Uh, uh, it's one of the reasons why you're making your claim, uh, one of the grants for seeking for, for making a refugee claim, whether it's United States of Alpha or United Seven of, of, of Alpha, as well, with respect to seeking for protection. All those things are important in looking at. And uh, again, generally, it will be on a case-by-case -case basis and people have to seek counsel about that. Yeah, okay. Great, great insight from you, sir. And uh, just like you said, last words, um, when you do make a refugee claim in Canada, your claim is likely going to be heard by the Immigration and Refugee Board. Generally, first hearing before the Refugee Protection Division if for any reason that doesn't go positively from your perspective, then you have an opportunity to appeal to a, board, a division in the Immigration and Refugee Board known as the Refugee Appeal Division. Um, but ultimately, it's been a pleasure um, being here with JB today to share information with our community. Again, like I said at the beginning, knowledge is power. So we do en uh, encourage everyone to try as much as possible to look out for information uh, the best way you can find it. For us, we provide this information through our social media platforms, on YouTube, we're also on Instagram, I believe on Twitter as well. So you can follow us to keep abreast of various uh, important legal issues that we discuss in an informal setting like this uh, so that our community can be empowered and uh, make the best of their access to justice in Canada. Thank you very much again and stay safe, everyone. Thank you.